Welcome to the sustainability track. I'm Flor, uh, I'm one of WeShare co-founders, and I also run a French NGO called Zero Waste France. So that's why I'm here to um, help um, you enjoy this sustainability track. Hello, I'm David. I'm sustainability connector of WeShare based in Munich, Germany. Um, before we start, we just would like to introduce a, in a few words uh, why we actually decided to bring up this track. Um, so basically the concept, for example, of peak oil is actually nothing new, probably neither to you, and neither is uh, peak everything. Uh, also it's not, uh, nothing new, uh, like the issues that um, uh, exponential economic growth bring up. Um, and it's also nothing new, uh, like the inequalities and the unequal wealth distribution on this planet. And it's also nothing new that we have now some uh, initiatives in the sphere of collaborative economy, which are actually trying to address those issues. So, for example, there's those makers um, uh, trying to build up like a, a distributed and local production. There is collaborative consumption uh, initiatives trying to bring up um, access over ownership. And all of those are actually um, grassroots initiatives, mostly uh, trying to solve issues which policymakers are not able to do. And of course, the question remains whether all this has the impact, the good impact that we assume it has. And to help us answer uh, this question tonight, uh, we have uh, a bunch of great speakers. Um, so. Thanks to them for joining us today. And to begin with, um, I would like to welcome a very special guest who came all the way from Berkeley, California. Um, do you know this cartoon? Does that ring a bell? Yes. Well, this is where everything began. Uh, the story of stuff was first a video uh, then it was several videos, all of them has, have four to five million views on YouTube, it's huge. And now it's a movement, it's an organization with uh, more than one million members. And this organization is dedicated to um, citizen engagement, to uh, building a new way of uh, building and using and throwing away stuff that would be more sustainable and fair. And I would like to welcome uh, Alison Cook, who is the Director of Citizen Engagement at The Story of Stuff. A warm welcome. Hi. Um, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm gonna actually tell you two things before I start, um, which are that I'm a little nervous. Um, and because I'm a little nervous, I'm going to use my notes. I hope you don't mind. Yeah. Closer to my mouth. Is, is this better? Can you hear me better? Um, great. So, are we set? We'll just get started. Uh, voila. Okay, so as Floor mentioned, I work with an organization called the Story of Stuff Project. Um, our work initially started with a 20-minute movie um, about how we make stuff, how we use stuff, and how we throw it away. Um, from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where they mine the coltan that makes your smartphone so smart, to the, uh, excuse me, to the crowded Foxconn factories where they are, it, putting it into injection molded plastic to uh, the fields of Ghana where they are throwing it when you upgrade. Um, every day we tell stories and ask people to take action online in classrooms and church basements because there is a better way of doing these things and we need people like you and me to get us going. And so that's what I wanna talk about today the ways that people like you and I can get us going in the right direction, people power. So our movies look a lot like this. It's a woman, Annie Leonard, who looks a lot like a third grade teacher talking quickly against a white screen 
with a lot of really cute black and white animations in the background. To be honest, we didn't have very high hopes for the first movie, and I was initially only hired to work a few hours a week for a couple of weeks. That was nearly seven years ago now. At the time, we developed a set of, excuse me, in time, we've developed a set of nine movies that have been seen over 45 million times and translated into over 30 languages. An incredible and diverse network of teachers and advocates, government employees, tech entrepreneurs, and stay-at-home moms have coalesced around our content and provided us with a rousing chorus of people saying, what can I do? How can I take action? For anyone trying to make a difference in the world, this is the scenario that you dream about. We've tried really hard to take advantage of that, to listen really close to what people are asking and to do our best to provide for it. In these years, we've learned and are continuing to learn a great deal about our efforts in telling good stories and trying to change our relationship with stuff and to teach each other to be better to one another and to the planet. So I wanted to share three ideas or insights from those learnings over the past seven years. One is that people are overwhelmed by the problems, be they environmental, social, or economic. Two, that people want to do something about these problems. And three, that everyone will be better off for being involved. At the story of stuff, we often joke that you only need one graph, and this is it. Um, this is the graph of bad things. So whether you're talking about the increasing cost of education, rising sea level rates, et cetera, this is the graph of pretty much everything. People are overwhelmed by these facts, and our planet is in trouble. But I refuse to believe that people don't care. All of my work at The Story of Stuff has demonstrated over and over again that people care so much, but that they are simply overwhelmed. This means that the challenge for citizen engagement is different than we thought. And as a result, we need to engage with it differently. When I get overwhelmed, I often think about this quote from Carl Sagan. In fact, I have it clipped to my desk lamp at my office. He says, consider that dot, that's us, the aggregate of our joy and suffering, every young couple in love, every superstar, every supreme leader on a mode of dust suspended in a sunbeam. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Overwhelmed people like you and I need ways to engage, not more things to care about. The thriving nature of We Share Fest and, organ and the organizations and people in this room are a testament to people's desire to build solutions, to, as Carl Sagan says, to deal more kindly with one another and preserve this pale blue dot. We have no shortage of solutions platforms. All you have to do is talk to the person next to you, and I hope that after I'm done talking, you will do that to hear all about some rad, new, solutions-oriented project that you've never heard of before. What we lack is equity, justice, and deep participation. That is a bit harder to create than a new app, but ultimately far more important. To achieve that, we are going to need better and more citizen engagement, people power of a new magnitude. This feels especially poignant to me, given what's been happening in the United States from Ferguson, Mississippi, Baltimore, Maryland, and my own hometown of Oakland, California. The racial tensions are high and police brutality is rampant. This photograph was taken by Devin Allen, a local Baltimore photographer who has been documenting the recent protests and Baltimore riots on Instagram and was picked up and featured on the cover of Time Magazine, one of the most popular news magazines in the US. Devin's story is particularly compelling to me 
not only because of the heartbreak that's happening in Baltimore, but also because it testifies to a recurring theme that we've seen in our work at the story of stuff, that there are so many ways to get involved, so many ways to flex your citizen muscle. As people who want to engage more citizens, we need to think more creatively about what that engagement means. It's so much more than voting or protesting. It's about how you show up in community. We have continuously heard from our members a similar refrain that says, I'm not an activist, but, and then they go on to tell us via email or phone all of the amazing things that they're doing to create a better world. We realized that what we needed was a more expansive framework for understanding what it means to be involved. In response to this, we developed a changemaker personality quiz. As you can see, it's six different archetypes of change makers. You, take, you answer seven questions and it tells you what kind of change you're most likely to be making in the world. I happen to be a networker. Um, it's basically just a lighthearted way of getting at this question, what can I do? To which I would then respond, what are you good at? What gets you excited about the world? But the thing is, is that even if you're good at things, you have to practice. There's a heroine of the civil rights movement in the United States named Rosa Parks. She was a black woman riding the bus in the segregated 1950s. She was arrested when she failed to give up her seat to a white passenger who boarded after her. This act of defiance played a critical role in shepherding forward the bus boycotts that in turn propelled forward the, the critical civil rights legislation of the 1960s in the United States. But the way that this story gets told in most US history classes is that Rosa Parks sat down on a bus and then voila, we had civil rights, the end. What this writes out of the story is incredibly important, which is that Rosa Parks was part of a much longer, larger community. She went to numerous activist trainings at places like the Highlander Center and was a member of her local NAACP chapter. She didn't propel to this great societal change by way of magic. Instead, she participated in a community of practice that encouraged her, developed her skills, and trained her. Training and community are two of the most critical elements of people power which is part of why we've developed the Citizen Muscle Boot Camp. We call it that because being a citizen is, about, is a muscle that you have to flex. Events like We Share Fest are an amazing opportunity to dive into this work. It's a beautiful congregation of practitioners who are thinking about our better future, getting together to talk shop and compare notes. It is a blissful marriage of both community and training. But for the thousand people who are here today, there are thousands more who can't be here because they can't afford the trip, because they just had a baby, because they never even heard about it in the first place. And I know that this event is live streaming, but the Citizen Muscle Boot Camp that we've made is yet another attempt to provide more resources for the folks who aren't in the room. It's a response to the refrain that we've heard over and over again that pe from people all across the globe who say, I understand that there's a problem, I want to do something about it, but I don't know where to start. Our Citizen Muscle Boot Camp is a rough and tumble introduction to the basic skills of change making. Purpose, what do you really care about? What are you good at? What lights your innermost fire? Talk. How do you connect with people about the things that you care about in a way that genuinely engages them instead of bombarding them with facts and statistics? Grow. How do you build your network and community so that it's not you all by yourself trying to save the whole world? Practice. How do you keep showing up? What's your next step? So we know, one, that people are interested and that they just are simply overwhelmed. We know too that if they're overwhelmed, 
we, they, we need to provide them creative ways to get involved and flex their citizen muscles. Whether it's taking an online course or providing childcare so people with young kids can attend a meeting for an upcoming mobilization or simply donating funds to a new project. There is no shortage of amazing opportunities for citizen engagement online and on land. This brings us then to the third insight, that you will be better off for being involved. This is maybe the best part, that living out your purpose is a joy. There is a budding field of research that suggests that people who are engaged in meaningful work who are connected to something bigger than themselves and have a sense of community are the happiest and healthiest people. So this means that not only might we be able to create a world with more justice that hears more voices, where we might even have a fighting chance of continuing to live on planet Earth, but also that you'll be happier and healthier for it. What more could you want? It's true that we've inherited a broken world, but let's refuse to let that break us. In my own work, there are things that I am dissatisfied with. A unit of the Citizen Muscle Bootcamp that isn't quite going as planned, some absurd number of hours spent staring into an Excel spreadsheet. But at the end of the day, I get to ask big questions. How do you get someone to believe that they can make a difference and then act on that belief? How do you create meaningful and valuable community on the internet? How do you build a better world? I am so looking forward to getting closer to these answers. And I'm hoping that in whatever way works for you, we'll get there together. Thank you.